Hi everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well and welcome to another video. We've got a very interesting case here and I wanted to share it with you because this is one of the very few uh, instances where I have, by a pure accident, um, stimulated someone's Arnold's reflex. So, and what that is, is a um, unwavering feeling to cough when you um, have your ear canal stimulated. So Arnold's reflex is not present in everyone. So it's, if we look at the research, it may only be have a prevalence of about two to three percent in the population. Um, I rather suspect on an anecdotal level, it's higher than that. But essentially, if the ear canal is stimulated in a certain way, people with this Arnold's reflex will not be able to control themselves coughing. They will cough violently until that stimulation goes away. And this is, I've seen this many times before, but not usually when doing wax removal. Um, so as an audiologist, we, we see it more often when we're taking mouldings of ears. So if we need to make someone a custom hearing aid that goes inside the canal, or um, we have a musician, maybe we want to make them some custom monitors or custom earplugs, what we'll do is essentially shove a piece of cotton, uh, like a sponge, into the ear canal and then fill it with uh, like a special type of silicone putty, very similar to how dentures are made. And more often than not, when we shove in the sponge, that's when we'll trigger the Arnold's reflex, if the patient has it, uh, which is not a problem because you know, nothing bad is going to happen. However, when doing wax removal, uh, when you've got a Jobson horn or a suction probe deep in the ear canal, you certainly don't want someone to be coughing violently. And uh, if they do cough, then you'll want to exit out of the ear canal jolly quick with whatever implement you're, you're holding, uh, because you don't want it to be knocking around against the, uh, the ear canal walls causing damage. So you're going to see uh, me trigger the Arnold's reflex uh, just in the second part of this video. So we're just doing the, this ear first. Um, quite a bit of wax in this ear. It's not occluding the, the ear canal, but this patient is heavily reliant on hearing aids and the problem that they were having was they, their hearing aid kept blocking up over and over again with, um, with ear wax. So I'm just removing um, as much as possible with the Jobson horn and with the idea that we can leave a nice smearing or film of wax on the ear canal to defend the patient from infection. So, uh, and there's a bit of tympanosclerosis actually on this eardrum, so you might be noticing the eardrum sort of lurking in the background there, and you'll see these sort of white splodges on the eardrum, and that's scar tissue essentially. So this patient at some point must have suffered from uh, a few bad ear infections uh, on this side, and the, the eardrum is then healed up, and those white splodges are actually calcium deposits on the eardrum. So, uh, but anyway, going back to the Arnold's reflex, um, the reason that it occurs is because, uh, so the, there's a, a special nerve called Arnold's nerve. Some people call it Alderman's nerve, but most people uh, refer to it as Arnold's nerve, um, named after Frederick Arnold, who uh, was a doctor in the 1800s who first described this reflex. And uh, the, the nerve that supplies feeling or sensory information to the ear canal, the tragus, which is this sort of triangle bit of cartilage here, parts of the, uh, the outer ear, so the pinna or the auricle, um, and skin behind the ear, the, the sensory information for those areas is carried by a nerve called Arnold's nerve, and that is actually uh, a branch of a larger, longer, more important nerve called the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve is, it's, it's, the reason it's called vagus is because vagus is a, a Latin term, which means wandering. Uh, and that's because the vagus nerve is the longest cranial nerve in your body, so it goes from your brain all the way down through your abdomen to your colon. And uh, you have, so I'm just, you can see the tympanosclerosis here, sorry just to, to interrupt. So where the arrows are, you see those white splodges? That's scar tissue. And it's not going to harm the patient, it's not going to affect your hearing. It's just uh, something very interesting that I thought I'd, um, I'd mark with arrows there. So there we go, there's the, the left ear done. Um, so the, the vagus nerve actually has a few important functions in your body um, and so it uh, not only provides sensory information to, for, to parts of the ear through Arnold's nerve but it also uh, controls various things like um, sensory information from your throat, your esophagus, your lungs, um, it uh, has various motor functions like it, it can slow your heart rate down and so on and when you basically brush up against Arnold's nerve inside the ear canal, you might elicit a cough response based because you're essentially stimulating another part of the vagus nerve. And interestingly, if you're unlucky enough, you may in fact um, 
In very few cases, this is very, very rare, but a patient might faint, so they'll have what we call syncope. And that is because, as I mentioned before, part of, one of the jobs that the vagus nerve has is to slow your heart rate down. And when you brush up against the ear canal with these patients, again, it's never happened to me, but there are documented cases of this where the patient will faint due to bradycardia. And bradycardia is just a low, low heart rate, essentially. So, And tachycardia is a high heart rate. So uh, again, I'm just working through this very soft wax with the Jobson horn there. And when I go up to get the wax on the roof of the ear canal, that's when it happens. And you'll see just for a, a brief moment in time, the, um, the camera will experience a bit of an earthquake effect, uh, which is the patient violently coughing. And um, you'll see me exit out of the ear fairly quickly with a Jobson horn. So just getting past this hair and getting that last little bit. So there's no scar tissue on this side, which is interesting. So you must have only had um, injury or infection on, on the other side. So we'll just get this last piece. And again, I'll show all of this um, above, uh, an after picture of the, the tissue and what's in the tank as well. There's not too much to show actually. Uh, so we'll just clean off the Jobson horn. And this is perhaps one of the disadvantages of using manual tools so frequently is that you might elicit Arnold's response. But here we go. So just as I touch the back side of the, uh, the back side of the ear canal, there we go. So you can see he's coughing, 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 and immediately I whip out the Jobson horn to prevent it from knocking around in the ear canal. So now instead of using the Jobson horn, which, uh, which will um, elicit the response, I'll go back to the suction probe and just drag this rather large piece of wax out that could block up his hearing aid. And just drag it down, and there we go. So quite a fascinating um, topic, Arnold's reflex. And actually, vagal, vagal nerve stimulation um, has been the, the intense um, has been the subject of intense scientific research because when you stimulate the vagus nerve, it can do various different things, and it's actually been studied um, as a treatment for depression, uh, amongst other things as well. So it's a, it's a very well researched cranial nerve there. So we can just mopping up here, but again, I don't really want to be brushing up too much against the ear canal wall in case the patient coughs again. So there we go. Nice looking eardrum there. Slightly thickened, but um, it's absolutely normal and fine. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed this short video uh, looking at Arnold's reflex. There's the, the aftermath of the wax and hair that was in the ear canal. So we're looking at about together, maybe a centimetre and a half, something like that. Uh, and a picture of the Jobson horn as well. And um, there really isn't too much to show um, in the canister, but I thought I'd show that to you anyway, just because it's quite interesting to see the, you know, all of the debris that was removed in there. So there we are. So thank you very much for watching, leaving comments. If you have any questions, leave them below and I will try to answer them as best as possible. And I will see you on the next video.